All right, so we see opening hands for both players. And let me tell you, Arya's hand is looking quite powerful. Urza Saga is a card that you often want to open with. On, On the, the other, other side of the table, we see Martin with a hand that is no joke either. Turn one adept that can hit really hard. Yeah, but uh, I guess every, that is a pretty clean turn here, the adept. And then from Aria, we're going to see, I assume, a grazer turn one into a saga. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, for Aria, Flameblade Adept has Menace, so it's not going to be blocked by and this Grazer anytime soon, but next turn you are a, you are going to be able to produce a Construct. You have two creatures to double block. Although, of course, we might see Martin just firing off this Burning Inquiry, so planning your next turn is always a little bit challenging against Hollow One because you don't actually know what cards you're going to have access to. Uh, yeah, I'm loving this already. But there's the hollow one even. Okay. All right. Is Martin going to discard his hollow one? Nope. I was about to say, Arya didn't even have green mana for the explore, but now there's the forests. <laughs> yeah, this might have been an improvement, actually. Although the ring is gone, so... Yeah, she's going to miss the ring, but... The green mana is probably going to more than make up for that, and Summoner's Pact is pretty good threat too, so. No second land, unfortunately, for Martin. Mm -hmm. And while Arya did take a four damage hit right now, and the Hollow One is ready to attack next turn, it's uh, not going to be all that quick for Martin if he has to deploy threats as the, at this slow one mana per turn rate. Although Rakyus Theater is here to help. And there's something to be said about a deck that doesn't have any fetch lands and shark lands in it, right? Like Amulet Titan really starts at 20 life against uh, a deck like Hollow One that, that damage raises you and, and that is big. Yeah, certainly that's one of the maybe hidden strengths of the deck while well, fashions are of course like just so powerful you do get to start with those extra two three maybe even five life points per game so it does add up absolutely so interestingly aria chose to hold the explore and instead making a construct to block the incoming damage. It does make sense. Explore scales pretty well with amulets in play, so it does make sense to hold it. And if you don't take your value from Uza Saga producing a construct right now, you're basically missing it. Like, you're basically bleeding it for... It's not going to happen anymore. It's going to be gone. Yeah, I think that, that was a heads-up play. I mean... You would think casting your spells is the correct move, perhaps, or casting explore as early as possible so you get the most the maximization of having that extra mana. Um, but Arya uh, at identifying here that the best use of resources is actually to basically spend the turn gaining full life. Yep, and also just acknowledging that this, you know, while explore would produce extra mana later on, it's going to turn into an extremely powerful ritual effect. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so Martin adds a Nether Goyf to the battlefield, which is currently a 4 5. That's no joke, but at 14 life, it does not seem like he's going to be able to finish the game on turn 4 like he promised. <laughs> yeah, 9 damage plus bold, shoot the blocker. Is just 12 in the end, so maybe double street rape off the top does the trick. Uh, if Aria doesn't provide another blocker here, mm -hmm. primeval titan always hard to make those sur surveil or cry decisions. Like, you know, what, what happens? Like, do I want to keep this card 
in case if Martin just is going to cast another burning inquiry, you know, that probably goes through your mind and you have to account for that. So normally you probably wouldn't be much interested in another copy of the of a Titan here, but with that in the mix, you can think it's... about it. Quantsies is not in the main deck, so yeah, it is the inquiry though that that could mess mess with the summoners pack. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we see explore finally getting cast, and Arya prepared the board pretty nicely for a primal titan next turn. There's four lands on her side of the table and mirror pool is going to enter the battlefield tapped with two amulet triggers the second amulet is going to come from urza saga that's going to be six mana which is enough to spawn a primeval titan which should be lethal unless martin actually holds a double ball that could be nope. a little bit of an issue Mm, but it's very tempting to. Oh no, it's a two-two actually. It's a campo master the, the token. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, this is a decision point. So you know, like light, double double lightning bolt is not a surefire way to stop Arya, but it does make things a little bit harder. Not to, not to not to an extent where it would be impossible for her to fight through it but we'll see if martin decides to wait on those or if he's just gonna fire one to make his attack stronger i mean the unfortunate thing that i see in, that i envision here even if he hold if, if he uses both the bolts on the titan avria will get another turn and then the summoner's pact will just get another titan and uh, rinse repeat so yeah yeah you could also fetch a lotus field and a shifting woodlands with a titan which mm. honestly is going to let you transition pretty smoothly into the analyst infinite so scratch that and here here we had an interesting i guess decision during blocking uh, Aria could double block the Adept, which is somewhat tempting because then you just, that's a value block, right? You you take down the 1-2 basically for free, you keep both of your creatures but that would put her down to 6 life against 2 lightning bolts so it has a play to not take the value block which, to be fair if Aria wins this turn then mm, it doesn't matter if Martin controls this adept or not anymore. Yeah, I probably couldn't have passed up that double block. I need that value. Uh, that's no. Yeah, no, assessing the game state correctly, preserving as much life as possible. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's an in interesting dance sometimes in magic. Do you take the value block or do you um, go for the sort of tempo line? And in this case, we're playing modern. Uh, yeah, it's it's, it's more of a limit, I think, I guess, but yeah, yeah. We'll see. So you're saying with Woodland and Lotus Field we can generate like seven mana and then get a get an analyst and just go infinite? Well, so first we produce eight mana, then mm -hmm. we sacrifice Lotus Field and let's say Crumbling Vestige to do the Lotus Field. And then if you play Analyst, mill three cards, sacrifice your Analyst, you'll produce more mana than, than, than you spend because of double Amulet. Which then with the Survival Land on the battlefield will let you do that in, in an infinite amount of times. And thanks to the Survival Land, you're going to be able to Survival one extra card into your graveyard with each iteration. So eventually you'll just have your entire deck in your graveyard and all of the lands from your deck onto the battlefield. and. From there, you can just basically do anything. Okay, but we're not going for that. Maybe we can still go for that, but mm, maybe maybe going for the Colossus, but that would be pretty painful into the Bowmaster. Yeah, oh, double bounce land 
typically means going for the for the colossus it does make sense to well it's going to be a little painful aria is still at 13 life so you can draw a handful of cards and be perfectly fine hmm. i guess this will also generate a lot of mana yeah and uh, aria picked up mirror pool which is also a wise choice. You get to have a mirror pool on top, right after your Cultivator's Colossus trigger has result, which is very useful. You get to copy your Titan and uh, haste both of your Titans attack for basically lethal damage with Cassie Wolf Run. Basically, what am I saying is that all roads lead to Rome. At at this point. Alright. Alright, so Martin is making the choice to kill the cultivator colossus. Which is fair. Although it is also it also means that Arya now doesn't have to fear anything because everything is on the table, there's no one untapped and You can just cleanly go for the Cassie Wolf run lethal. That's probably the fastest. Also, if we account for Magic Online, the interface, you know, it's not always the most smooth, let's say, or like the easiest to perform the entire amulet combo turn. So you're probably going to choose to go for the faster option. That is fair. Um, anybody who knows, uh, yeah, with the Nado combo deck, I remember to play testing on Magic Online. I always, uh, yeah, you had to play the Texas Oracle essentially, right? Just mm -hmm. Texas always... Oracle or uh, finally of Devastation was another option, right, right? Right, to commit a slot in the deck to a card you wouldn't want to play otherwise because you couldn't execute all the theoretical loops that you could just announce in paper one of the like limitations of all right so a second titan that should now fetch a honor battlements i believe Which with the red floating can just give double haste. Uh huh. It, 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 I gotta say, it's kind of convenient to have you here in the booth, the, the amulet master himself, um, <laughs> going through the lines. Have you Today. ever gave amulet a try, Arne? Uh, personally, not really. No, no, I have not. And looking at the spot state, I'm not sure I, <laughs> I will anytime soon. Um, I'm sorry to say. Yeah, not your speed, I I assumed. <laughs> not my speed, all right. Well, I, 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 I'm nearing the combo field with Storm today. It's also not, not my speed, you could say. So we're getting somewhere. Um, we'll see. Yeah. Certainly, it takes a certain way of approaching and enjoying the game to, to find beauty in some of the more wilder decks and yeah i guess that's that's what i'm doing my entire let's say career i'm just looking at neoform decks and amulet decks and song of creation combo decks and i'm just thinking to myself wow this is so neat <laughs> hmm. yeah i mean in the end i think i mean there's just um you can like if I would pick up the stack, play it enough to sort of figure out the lines and, 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 and you know, I'm reasonable at math. I, I can figure, I, like, watching Aria play here, I can see everything. I can sort of understand it. Um, and uh, I, think, I think, generally speaking, you shouldn't, like, if you want to be a competitive player, stay away from any deck. There's, um, you can learn it. Like you can learn it. You can learn it. Don't underestimate yourself, and don't be. Don't don't put yourself in like that one, 
the pocket, something I've learned over, over the years. Assuredly. I guess a little bit is more so that it's easier to learn a thing if you enjoy it. And oh, yeah. That's so. very true. That's probably... You, you, you've you also played your fair time of, you know, non-combo decks, right? So, I mean, it is possible. Yeah. Sure, at least so. Even, even, didn't you, what did you play in the, in the Mythic Championship that you won? Was it, was it Sacrifice or was it? It was John Sacrifice, yeah. Yeah, right, right. I mean, it's sort of a combo deck, I guess, but also a mid-range deck. Certainly. Like, what, what I, maybe what it boils down to is that I like clicking cards, and with Color and Familiar, for sure, you get a, a lot of that. You get to click a lot of cards, and they change zones, and stuff is happening. A little bit of dopamine every single time a card changes zones, so <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm just after that. And we see Arya successfully executing the full combo. All right, Damping Sphere has been uh, put aside by Martin. It does make sense. Fotsis is already in the deck, so Martin was sure that he wants Fotsis, and probably now considering whether he can make space for those Damping Spheres which they're pretty okay, especially with the new builds, the build that Arya is playing. Uh, Lotus Field is a card that is especially vulnerable to, to Dumping Sphere. Previously, uh, it was kind of hit or miss, you know, Bounce Lands, you would, you would like make the Bounce Lands produce one, less, one fewer mana, but it wasn't the end of the world for the Amulet player. With Lotus Field, it actually can be the end of the world because we're just so far behind in some spots when you had to develop your Lotus Field early, so Dubbing Sphere is certainly stronger than it used to be. While on the Arya's side, I see some cards changing. I believe Radiant Fountain made its way in. Yes, and Dismember. Those were the two cards added. Nothing has been removed yet. Seems like Arya is not interested in anything else out of the sideboard. And Martin has decided to shave two Bowmasters and two Lightning Bolts and the Arcs of Agonas and a Fatal Push for the Damping Spheres and the Font Seasons. That does make sense. Orcish Bowmaster is always a little bit of a tough choice against Amulet. I found that it's not always an easy decision to make whether you want to keep them in your deck or not. It is a one ring deck after all, so Orcish Bowmasters is famously pretty pretty decent at punishing the one ring. On the other hand, it is a two mana two one ones, so it can be not the fastest at pressuring the remaining section of draws that Amulet can produce. So just cutting two to have option to draw them but not focusing and not Trying not to flood on, the, on that effect makes sense. Yeah, I, I can see that. Arya ended up adding uh, a third Poseidon and a Miser's Force of Vigor, respecting those Damping Sphere, I suppose. Hollow One as well, as well as Detective Phoenix, actually. Mm. Force of Vigor on Detective Phoenix, that probably would be the first time I would see, I see that play, but it does make sense. And Arya took out Kessig Wolfrun, those deciding that the aftermath analyst way of doing things is sufficient here. Does make sense. Martin's deck only has three surgical extractions in the way of graveyard hate. And he's probably not going to be interested in bringing those. It would really be a long shot to try to use those to fight Arya's deck. So. It does make perfect sense to me. All right, Martin mulliganing to six here. And this one, perhaps to keep, does have a sideboard card, not a lot of pressure. Um, yeah. Maybe a loot rake on turn three with haste, I suppose. <laughs> two two and a and a sideboard card. Let's go. 
Yeah, the Nether Golf doesn't seem very big either. This is tough. While well, Aria has just just has an excellent hand. Uh, two pieces of interaction. Of course, she wouldn't want to pitch the Prime Vault Titan, but likely another green card will show up at some point of the game. And low down Martin Straw, certainly welcome to. And of course, Amulet is just the deck is called Amulet. You want to have it in your opening hand as often as possible. And draws another sideboard card on turn one. Everything going Arya's way. Yep. In the face of this flame blade adept, it's basically a double time walk, so really, really <laughs> strong. <laughs> Oh man, Lotus Field. That, that 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 essentially Lotus Field Amulet of Vigor makes gives you gives you dark ritual in modern. Spicy, mm -hmm. spicy. And even cast that dismember cleanly. Well, not anymore with the dumping sphere in play, but absolutely. I suppose that's a little awkward here for Arya. Only green card for the force of vigor to pitch is the Titan that you of course want to keep. Yeah. Most likely, well, it looks like she can just wait, right? As as I said, the double time walk uh, is doing its job on the battlefield. What do you think about this dismem? Oh, because no, wait, hmm, because we're playing a bounce land here. Like well, the main piece dismember is interesting. Bit curious. I think you could wait for the most part, and uh, it seems pretty hard to be punished, right? You can the uh, flame blade other doesn't pump its toughness, so you could kill it at any time. But I guess if you do it at sorcerer speed, then you can still pitch force of vigor, which would be true otherwise too. So yeah, I guess it does make sense. It does limit the amount of pressure so seems pretty good either way oh, yeah. that's a good point the force of vigor being able to cast yeah didn't see that all right and now we see the extra green card necessary so if all goes well for aria i see a primal titan entering the battlefield next turn but have you thought about a 2 2 flying? Yeah, stop. <laughs> I mean, the, the Detectors Phoenix is unfortunately going to actually just be. Oh, a second damping sphere. Well, it doesn't matter. Well, the figure has, has two targets. Yeah, it doesn't really help here all that much. So. I'm wondering, is Arya going to cast Fossil Vigor right now, pitching Soundless Pact? If so, I'm maybe slightly surprised by the choice of playing the Steaming Grove Chamber on the last turn instead of maybe an Akong Deeps. Because now Arya is going to need to sacrifice her Grove Chamber or Lotus Field to summon a Titan on this turn. Nonetheless, that's fine. You you can take it and Aria got a little excited there actually and destroyed four damage, I believe. It, oh, is that true? Or am I am I missing something? Maybe that's not true actually. Well No, I think it's not true. Like, I, I think uh the left the, the I I thought that Nedagoth might have been buffed because Aria destroyed the three damage. But, uh, I believe it got buffed, but it's also and a it's the same result, right? Also, Vigor destroys an enchantment uh, yeah, true, and an yeah. artifact, so that's two power the guy, but you remove a two power hasty creature. So absolutely. All right, so with just a single amulet, Primal Titan does not win on the spot, but it's also. Are we going to be good enough to all does but Martin, guarantee victory? Does Martin have any any draws here? 
is nothing that can kill the Titan in his deck. Can kill a Titan. Maybe Martin just Goblin Lore into Burning Inquiry. That's plus three, plus three. Plus, that's a seven power adept. And if the Nether Goyf is going to have five power, that would be lethal. Well, the Arya no... still gets to maybe gain extra life. So, like, basically, Arya's options with the attack trigger are Pojuga Bog to limit the size of the Nether Goyf. Or perhaps we could see Bajuka Bog in a bounce land, bounce back, let's say Hanwar Battle Bands, which would both reduce the Nether Goyf to a 0 1, and then he has three mana available to cast his Spelunking. And luckily, there actually is a cave in her hand. <laughs> so there is, there is a little, a little bit of a Secret text on, on Spelunking, you do gain four life if you put a cave into play with its triggered ability. So echoing deeps would yeah. uh, would just gain her that four life and that would probably just put her outside of a, the range of anything that Martin can do, but we'll see. Okay. She's choosing a different line instead. So Mikosin Gardens and Simming Grove Chamber. Is she going to copy the amulet right now? I, I mean, I don't know, but I assume it's it's just going to be the Spelunking plus Cave line then. Put yourself at sixteen, and I guess even even if there is Goblin Lore plus. That's burning. It's not enough. Yeah, then you're probably still fine. It's also possible that the Bujuka bog didn't and did not end up getting boarded in. So like it's it's not clear if you actually want it in a matchup like this, so that is also very possible. That is fair. I, I think I may have seen it in the sideboard. Hmm. Arya put the Radiant Fountain into play instead of the Echoing Deeps. Unfortunately, you know, the cave text doesn't come up too often, so pretty easy to to miss it. Or maybe she wants to save the Echoing Deeps for, for the next turn in case of some unexpected uh, problems occurring. Of your shifting woodland, I suppose? I, I... Mm -hmm. Same things, yeah. And yeah, Martin actually drew Burning Inquiry, so this is kind of what he needed. So inquiry into inquiry. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, well, I mean, there's still a Detective's Phoenix in the graveyard. So can Martin actually cobble together enough damage? There is four damage from the Nether Goyf and four damage from the. Blame adapt that's eight with the detective phoenix assuming that we managed to um deploy it without losing any card types for another guy if that's plus two so i guess if we burning inquiry if martin plays burning inquiry and discards expensive cards Plays a hollow one. Hey, say hollow one. That would be eight plus eight. That's four plus four plus six. That's exactly fourteen. All right, I see an out. Yeah, I see. I see it as well. Those well thought out. Uh, Martin considering damping sphere. That is. Probably, I mean, we know about the Boseju, but yeah, a Damping Sphere at this point. Damping Sphere, yeah. So, so like, you know, we know about the Boseju. Martin also can know about the Boseju, given that 
you see the Primeval Titan, which can fetch it alongside a bounce land to destroy the damning sphere. So yeah, that's that's not likely going to stop Arya, and I think that is a conclusion that Martin could reach. Yeah. So I'm I'm really excited to see this burning and quiet getting cast, and you know, there is a chance he's gonna hit it. He's gonna hit lethal. Maybe there are other ways even. I guess even in an extra nether guard, that would also be like doesn't have to be a hollow one, right? True. Nether guard would also do it, yeah. Nether guard, yeah. But I think that's that's it. Nether guard hollow one, maybe a combination of goblin lore into an untapped land, return the phoenix. That is maybe also lethal. Mm -hmm. Uh this might be one short. He he would he would need to discard some some types for the nether guard to get there then. All right. Okay. We're still in it. Oh, the guacamole. Uh, are we? So the golf is a 5 6 right now. The golf needs to get one bigger, and Martin needs, needs to hit a land, I think. Yeah, needs to hit a land with goblin lore. So that... run any, any black cliff cliffs? Nope. <laughs> no, no black cliff cliffs. So that's, that's good for him. Okay. Needs to hit a land, and he needs to hit like a phoenix for the graveyard or an instant. Oh, that's not it. In the instant, so the land would have gotten there. 15 damage. No, exactly 14, actually. <gasps> wow. Damn. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Damn, 13 life. 13 damage on the battlefield against 14 life. That's, you know, so close. So close. Yeah, should have should have brought gut shot, clearly. I guess in this case, Martin is considering blocking with the Nethergoyf, which, yeah, you're probably better off. The, 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 when Martin has, like, a guaranteed Nethergoyf next turn, uh, no, perhaps not. Well, we'll see, I suppose. But yeah, he can put the Phoenix on the Nethergoyf next turn to, to swing for eight in the air. Mm -hmm. um, no reason, technically, to bring down Arya to one. Yeah, of course we know that Arya can attack with the Titan and, you know, double Amir on the battlefield, basically just do anything. That includes perhaps drawing a... You think even I would win from this position? I, th I think you'd manage, yeah. There's many options like grabbing a uh, Grove Chamber and Ottawa to bounce in Nether Gulf. Well, I guess that's not foolproof. So <laughs> I think you, I think you would manage, but you would have to put some effort. The Bajuka Bog, maybe Maria, maybe Arya after this game will be like, hmm, maybe you should have had this. Uh, yeah, the between the Detective Phoenix and just a sheer size on the other guy, if it certainly seems like a card I would consider bringing in. So we copied Woodland with the Echoing Depths. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing the plan now is to use Stolaria West to Grab a Summoner's Pact, Summoner's Pact for Analyst or Lumra. Most likely Analyst because we've seen the AF copying the Shifting Woodlands. Then Attack with Titan to get two more lands and you can transition to the infinite Analyst loop. Bless you. All right, so yeah, you can tr transition into the infinite loop uh, here pretty pretty easily. Arya perhaps may be regretting a tiny bit that the classic Wolfhound is not there to make things easy once again, but unfortunately, it's been boarded out. All right, so we see. 
map for Lotus Field. Grazer can put an extra land into play. That would be the Lotus Field. And then Polaria West can find. Once again, a Summoner's Pact, which then is going to perhaps fetch a Primal Titan, which you can haste with Hanor Battlements, and then you attack, pick up your Otawara, bounce the Nether Goyf that would block your one of your Titans, and then you deal 12 damage, therefore dealing lethal. So once again, Aria choosing the less click intense uh, way to win, I assume. I mean, there, there is the clock. You're already right, six minutes on the clock, so might also just be a strategic decision mm -hmm. in that regard. Certainly. And, you know, both both lines are just, you know, as lethal, as game-winning as, as the second one, so a very wise and understandable choice. 13 damage, Martin was close. Lumra. Okay. All right, so the Lumra is going to return a whole bunch of lands and it's going to be really big, so you could even skip the Ottawara part. Does it get trampled from the Hanwe Battlements? Oh, it does not. That is true. That's the one ability that Lumra is missing, so I guess Nedergo still needs to be dealt with. Well, there's no, it's, 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 in play. Uh, it can just get bounced, right? Yep. Okay. Well, there okay, we go. With those, with those big green creatures, it's just just kind of assume they all will have trample. Like with the with the ten ten or fifteen fifteen. Like how could it not trample, right? Over those puny little creatures. But turns out that Lumra does not possess that ability inherently. Yeah, I played with the card in standard a little bit in, in, in Analyst in the newer versions, and it was like 22 22, but it could just jump at each turn. Uh, uh, what can you do? No easy ways to grant a trample in that format, I assume. Uh, perhaps, perhaps. Um, I honestly didn't go as deep into the deck to, to search. Probably, probably wasn't the main focus. <laughs> yeah, I mean. You just have it for, for the return effect, mostly. All right, so unfortunately, we are in the red clock area for area. So that could be a bit tough. The analyst loops can be a little time consuming. So, certainly a yourself, danger. Just working yourself through uh, 20, 20 uh, triggers here. Canister, you would have a dopamine overdose. I <laughs> well, that, was, that would just be like, you know, every other game for me. <laughs> I'm used to that stuff. It's, uh, yeah, it's cool to see, like, also Amulets, just a deck that's been around for so many years and uh, continuously um, evolving, continuously changing a little bit here and there. And now it's not relying on the Boris Garrison or whatever it's called. And, uh, you know, now it has hundred battlements again, and Lotus Field made it into the deck. Very mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, it's still the core parts remain intact: the bounce lands, the amulets, the titans. But so much has been changed for throughout the years. It's pretty pretty incredible. I've actually like uh, made a video about the history of the deck uh, earlier this year, and it was just such a nice deep dive into 